This is the first podcast in a series on women by women in art, launched by the Institute of Art in the Arab World, in collaboration with Lauha and the Moving Biography Summer School. My name is Yasmin Taan, and I have with me today Samar Mgharbil. Episode 1, Samar Mgharbil on Dorothy Salhab Kazemi, discussing sculpture, 1974. Gharbir is a Lebanese ceramist who trained with Dorothy Salhab Kazemi at the Lebanese American University in Beirut in the late 70s. Her work has been exhibited in a large number of galleries and museums in Lebanon and abroad. She was awarded the Surso Museum Prize in 2006. She is a member of the International Academy of Ceramics based in Switzerland. Samar currently teaches ceramics at LAU. Dorothy Salhab Kazemi was born in 1942 and died too soon in 1990, leaving us with a legacy of hundreds of sculptures and pots, intriguing open and closed shapes, some colored and others preserve their terracotta earthly feel. She attended the School of Arts and Crafts in Copenhagen, Denmark, and trained with renowned Danish ceramist Gute Eriksen, with whom she learned the skills of throwing, glazing, and firing. She taught ceramics in Glasgow and later at LAU in Beirut. The most beautiful moment of my life is when I opened the kiln, said Dorothy. Her work was exhibited in Glasgow, Beirut, Copenhagen, Damascus, and France. She was a strong advocate for craftsmanship. She believed that maintaining handmade crafts is important to preserve cultural heritage. Inspired by the view from her studio overlooking the Mediterranean, but also Mount Sanin, she developed a ceramic language of her own. So in Dorothy's work, visual music, through which she expressed her love of the earth. Joseph Tarrab speaks of the spirit of the empty inner volumes of her pots. Many of her abstract and sensual curves are evocative of erotic forms that reveal a profound perception of the eternal duality that exists between nature and the human body. For example, this piece that looks like a flower, but also like a vagina. Hello, I am very pleased to be here to talk about Dorothy's work, because as Yasmin mentioned, she was, she was my mentor more than a a teacher. She was also a friend. When I lost her, I also lost a ceramics friend. There was no one in Lebanon that at the time and when I graduated and when I came back in the 80s and even the 90s and before she died, there was no, no one to speak ceramics with. Once I was with Dorothy at the Manara and we looked at the moon and she said to me, this looks like an inverted bowl. So after her death, I lost a friend and I lost, I lost a lot of things and I had to make it on my own, especially that I was given the charge to teach ceramics at BUC, LAU, where I, I did not, I was not an artist, I was just somebody who is passionate for ceramics. So when we go back to this piece, this piece that you would call a flower, vagina, whatever, now, this is a piece that is made on the wheel, if one would notice. Dorothy used to speak about the wheel and the circles that goes, because we used to use at LAU, we had, and at Dorothy's place also in Rumi, we used to have kick wheels. The kick wheel where one has to, is supposed to kick the wheel and then throw. Kick the wheel and throw. You cannot do both things at the same time. And she was, to was talking about the horizontal spiral and the spiral that goes inside the body, those two spirals. So the spiral and the wheel was very important for Dorothy. If one would look at Dorothy's work uh, in, in all the books or references, you would see that mostly, even her sculptural work, everything was made on the wheel. Thus, the, when we talk, when, when you said that she, had, she was very keen on, on the craftsmanship, Yes, I agree, because the wheel was very important for Dorothy. Even she used to make uh, things on the wheel, pots on the wheel, and then change them by tapping them with a wooden tool. 
So when we go back to uh, to this uh, this form, well, I will I have to speak a little bit about the clay. This is Lebanese clay. This clay I just learned recently about this clay because this clay Dorothy used to get it from Lebanon. Of course, there was no one who is, was importing any clay from anywhere. This is Lebanese clay, and it comes from Rashaya, mostly, mostly in, the, in those mountains, which are Rashaya is a mine of ceramics, of clay. And we have lots of kinds of this. And Muller, George Muller, who was the father of Samir Muller, he used to do this mixture. And if one would look carefully, you would see that there are impurities, lots of impurities, that Dorothy has used for a better purpose. This texture was very important. Now, another thing is that this clay has been fired to a high temperature. This is high earthenware, fired to a high temperature. This is why you would see, if one would look carefully, of if one has would go to the museum in Rumi, you would see that has things coming out of the clay, which is the sulfur and things like this. Many, a lot of iron, of course, because Lebanese is a Lebanese clay is a clay that contains lots of iron. And even if one would look at the shape, you would see that the upper part is also made out of as if this has been thrown on the wheel and there were a plate on top of a plate on top of a plate. And then probably Dorothy, when she, you know, how it happens in the mind of the potter, she was making maybe a different form and then she just realized that this could be, because ceramics has to have a hole. And she was, she made a hole, and this hole turned out to be this kind of shape. You can see clearly that there is a finger that goes almost erotic also, that goes from the center out. Yeah, another thing I want to say, this is very personal and very sentimental for me. Dorothy was a really wonderful person, a wonderful friend, and you don't, it's as if, during her life when she was here. And I had a little journey with her. I walked with her some of the of my life's and her life's time. We just walked together for this time and then she's gone and then other people would come and we would walk also another part of our life with other people. But the influence, her influence, I all, always, I always speak about Dorothy. I always tell my students about Dorothy. She's present even if she's absent. And she was with, I walked with her this journey for 10 years and uh, it, it will last for a lifetime as long as I am, I am on this earth. This is what I want to say. No one had this influence on me when we talk about clay because this was very much a concern for me and for her. And she once said to me, clay runs in your blood. So Dorothy survives through her work today through her pots, through her sculptures. The work of Dorothy can be found in the museum at Copenhagen. It could also be found at Surso Museum, at uh, Makam Museum. And uh, there are, uh, they are part of uh, private collections and the collections in uh, different uh, galleries. I think uh, Ajia Rakat had Some people have. her work. Yeah, so I guess... But I want to say another thing. Yes something very important. Dorothy died in 1990. One has to have this in mind because the work that Dorothy did is very much avant-garde. Even now, and when you look at pots of different kinds of ceramics, her work was very much avant-garde at this time. And it will stay because there is this energy that even if this on the throne bowls, on the throne works, on the first time I encountered Dorothy's work, when I wanted to do ceramics, and why should I, I thought to myself, why should I make pots like this? And why should I make pots anyway? Plates and jars and things. I was not really interested in this, but I was when I saw Dorothy's work at her, in her home, I was definitely not shocked, but very happy. And I thought, gosh, this is the work because it was made on the wheel. And all the energy that she has, she used to put it on and the work and the glaze and everything. So all the glazing also is made by herself. The glazing is not made like a lot of pots, a lot of potters in Lebanon at the broad. They don't bother about, uh, about making their own glazes. And this is what I want to say also. 
So her work, in a way, bridges sculpture and painting with the warmth of weaving and the transparency of textiles. She left too soon with a rich legacy of work. But again, she survives through her work today. And there is also one important thing. Dorothy did the excavation in, in Syria. We have some shirts at LAU that Dorothy had left. And the sensibility, Dorothy wanted to make a bridge between East and West. And like you were saying that it's weaving, I would say that it is remembrance or remaking or incorporating Islamic design in the bowls. But instead of repeating, making the same thing, of course, she wouldn't do that. She had made them like lines and very, it will remind you of Islamic ceramics, but it is her own interpretation. Yeah, there's something else that is very much attached to my heart because I saw her the last days before she passed away. And she was sitting in the hospital and of course she could not use the wheel, but she was making small sculptures. And those sculptures were quite flat on a beautiful pedestal. You no, know, the sensibility goes on to, to the to the very well, just touching the clay is you can feel the sensibility of this woman. And it was like figures, heads of women with the hair tied at the back. Her husband was telling me, look here, there is this direction of the look. Because she did not open the eye, just make a hole straight forward. She just poked it in a, in a, in a uh, diagonal way, which, make it, which makes her look at directions and the look. Most of the work produced by Dorothy Selhab Kazemi is present at Rumi, at the Museum of Dorothy Selhab in Rumi. Thank you for listening to this episode.